o'clock worshiping experience here online. We're so grateful and thankful all of you are able to join us on today. My friends, I do have a few announcements, and uh, Leanne also has some announcements, and then we'll move on with our worshiping experience. Of course, as you all are already aware, we are closed to the public for the month of May. The things that we have been doing, we will continue to do this month, like streaming now, of course, our Sunday evening activities with our youth and our children that Leanne will share more about, stories with staff, um, Chuck Ramsey's, I believe this is the, in this particular installment, if you will, this is the last lesson on hope in difficult times that takes place on Tuesdays afternoon uh, on our YouTube channel, but of course also on our website. And if you have not been watching these, I hope that you will go back and see them from the beginning. Uh, this is an, a, a very powerful lesson that Chuck is bringing to us, and we're grateful for this. And of course, our committees, Sunday school classes, many of our ministries are using to continue to use our Zoom account to gather. So we're grateful and thankful for these things. Now, for those of you who are interested um, who, who have a group in the church that needs to meet, if you're wanting to use our Zoom account, please contact Fiera Smith, our administrative assistant. She will let you know how to set that up uh, in, a, in a correct manner. We have established a reopening task force, and this particular group is charged with putting together a holistic plan, a full plan for reopening, even if we have to do it in phases or in stages. And as they begin, as they've already started this work, and they will be reporting to our session at the end of this month, I will then have more information to share about you as to what direction we'll be taking for the month of June and on. Now at this time, I'm going to ask Leanne Kerner if she will come with a few announcements for our youth, children, and families. Good morning. I want to remind you that a family Sunday school video is available on our Facebook and through the e-blast that was sent to your email this morning. Tonight's Zoom, you will not need any supplies. We will just be playing games, including my favorite of, is it a dog or fried chicken? Uh, I want to remind you that VBS is still happening this year. It will be virtual videos that we send to your home via an email address you provide. So we ask that you register for that on the youth and children's page of our website um, so we can have all the information. Please do that by the 25th of this month to guarantee a t-shirt. And finally, we are also in need of 150 of these watercolor paint palettes with the brush. If you would like to donate any of those, one or more, Please bring them to the church Sunday, May 31st, between noon and 4 p.m. Thank you, Leanne, for those announcements. Please, young people and parents, govern yourselves accordingly. Is it a dog or fried chicken? Let's hope that decision is made when you're not hungry. All right. <laughs> few more announcements, my friends, and then we'll move on with our worshiping experience. Of course, we thank all of you who have been helping us with Aldelia Manor. As we may mention this past week, uh, Aldelia Manor has been completely uh, blessed with so many food items that they are asking that we stop bringing them. So please, my friends, no longer are we asking you to bring food here to the church for Aldelia Manor. However, if you still have food donations, we are asking and encouraging you to take them to the White Rock Center of Hope. Uh, they are asking for any non-perishable donations, and they are receiving them from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday in the back. Many times there's someone back there to actually take the, the donations from you, but if not, they do have a table back there that you can leave the donations on. So please, we hope that you will uh, help us as we continue and as we have uh, continued to, to support White Rock Center of Hope in this regard. We're thankful for Maureen Ramsey and all the masks that she has been making, and many of us have them, and many more can be made. If you are interested in receiving a mask, please contact Maureen 
through the church website. On this website, all of our email addresses can be found, but hers is Maureen, M-A-U-R-E-E-N, at L-H-P-R-E-S dot org. Contact her, and she can get a mask made for you, and we'll get that mask to you as soon as we can. Again, we are very grateful and thankful for our graduates. We actually have three graduates here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, Sheila Toomey, Jonathan Rice, and Angela Landry, and we're very proud of them. And as many of you have been asking, we do have a plan, and we are working this out to celebrate our graduates, which will take place next month. There's some things that we are going to do in the month of June. So those of you who have gifts for our graduates, I'm going to ask if you want to get them to them directly, that's fine, but I'm going to ask that if you would just hold those until next month and then we'll give you more instructions as to what it is that we're going to be doing. I do plan another Facebook Live on this coming Wednesday at 3 p.m. Of course, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer, you can send those to me early or you can just post them while we're doing Facebook Live. All right, my friends, it's now time for us to worship God. And I know that each and every one of you are at home, probably in your comfort clothes, as, uh, as we know Kevin Farmer and his family are doing so, so energetically. Uh, but I also invite you at this time to stand. There is nothing wrong with being able to praise God in your home, standing up and praising his name. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. my song, praising my Savior all the day long. My King is coming soon, He will roll the clouds away, light of heaven bursting through, oh what a glorious day. Coming soon, he will roll the clouds away. Light of heaven bursting through, and until that glorious day, this is my story. 
this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Your breath. 
pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Let us pray. Everything we have, Lord, you've given to us. You've entrusted us with. And the opportunity to worship you in the beauty of holiness, in spirit and in truth, You've blessed us with this too. So today, Lord, let us bless you by lifting you high, proclaiming your name and your praises throughout the land. Let us bless you by worshiping you. For we know that you're worthy. You are splendid in all things. Magnificent all the time. A blessing in every way. So be with us. Show us what you want. And we will give it to you, Lord. For as always, it's not about us, it's all about you. And we want you to be pleased with how we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. But before we get there, Bible check. Grab your Bibles, make some notes. Cha John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. Hear the word of God. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Leanne. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, your gifts. For this opportunity... We say thank you. Now make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you today and in so doing, be better than we were before. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, today and next Sunday we begin a sermon series, we started today rather than we'll close it out next Sunday, called Mental Health, a sermon series on mental health. So, for those of you who are with someone, I'm going to ask that you would turn and look at them real good. If you're by yourself, just look at me and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is called Elephants in the Room. Amen. Elephants 
in the room. Friends, I have been working in the church and with the church, dealing with church inclusion for quite a while. Originally along the lines, of course, of racial reconciliation, of which I still, still do. But it's interesting to me, with the number of groups of people that we encourage to be a part of the body of Christ, the number of folks that we still ignore or make feel, make to feel unwelcomed in the house of God. So yes, today and next Sunday, we will see more people who are created in God's image, who are our sisters and brothers who are living with mental illness. I want to begin today by sharing with you a definition of mental health. This is coming from the Dictionary of Pastoral Care and Counseling, and you, may, you should be able to see it today. This is the definition for mental health. A condition of well-being in relation to self and others characterized by such qualities as a positive self-acceptance, an accurate perception of others and the world, stability and appropriateness in mood, balance and purposelessness in behavior, dependable sense of identity and values, adaptability to one's environment, ability to engage in productive work and fulfilling love, and commitment to a source of devotion beyond oneself. Here is a definition of mental illness. This comes from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual on Mental Disorder. Mental illness is defined as a syndrome characterized by clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotion regulation, or behavior that reflects a dysfunction in the psychological, biological, or developmental processes underlying mental functioning. NAMI, also known as the National Alliance on Mental Illness, defines mental illness as a condition that affects a person's thinking, feeling, or mood. I know. I should have given you that one first. That's a shorter one. But I needed you to understand the complete dynamics that is found with uh, mental health, being mental healthy as well as mental illness. But here's the truth. The truth is we all deal with some form of mental illness, if even just for a single solitary minute. All of us, all of us deal with mental illness at some point or another. It's, it's like the truth of dysfunctional families. Every family is dysfunctional from time to time. Healthy families, however, are those who know their dysfunction and are able to manage it, sometimes even able to correct it. So why does the church, yeah, why does the church seem to ignore this or has not really taken notice of this? Why does the church treat these conditions, depression, ADHD, loneliness, anxiety, rage, to name a few, why does the church treat these conditions as elephants in the room? Is it because we really don't think church folks struggle with mental illness issues? Is it because mental illness is too private to mention, especially in the church? Is it because we really don't know much about it and we really don't want to know much about it either? Or is it the same as it is with social justice, political, or cultural disorders? We don't want to mix our dear sweet Jesus with those topics. 
Listen closely, my friends. More than 40 million people, children, youth, and adults, have a diagnosed mental condition. More than 40 million. Mental illness is the leading cause of disability both in the United States as well as throughout the world. This means some folks that you know, some folks that you are related to, some folks that you have fallen in love with are dealing with mental illness. You see, many of us in the church are also living with a diagnosed mental health condition. Yet, the church still closes her eyes in the hopes that this will quickly change that this will go away. Why is that, parents? I'm so glad you asked. A big reason why is because we still link it to sin. And here's how. Mental illness is usually not seen in the same light as, as physical illness. You see, most of us don't look at a single person who has COVID-19 and declare that they have it because they've sinned, because they've done something wrong, that sin caused COVID-19 in the individual's life. You see, physical illness is beyond our control, but we don't always believe that to be the case with mental illness. So, folks will say there must be some unconfessed sin somewhere. That's why you act the way that you act. And there are many in the church who believe this. And we good old church folks, we just won't allow any positions or programs or ministries in the church for unrepentant sinners. Well, This leads us to our text for today. The disciples want to know who sinned? The man who was born blind or his parents? Now, this was a common belief that misfortune was the result of personal sin, especially illness during this particular day and age. So, a man being born blind poses a threat to this understanding. Who sinned? Somebody had to have sinned, Jesus, in order for this man to be born blind. Did he sin in the womb? Or was it his parents who sinned? Someone must have sinned. And unfortunately, many of us see mental illness the same way, a result of someone's sin. This is the reason why many who are living with mental illness will not come to the church or be a part of the church because it's something out of their control. And the thought of holy folks judging them or their children or their siblings is too much to bear. You see, the church can feel like hostile territory for families impacted by mental illness. And if the church, yeah, if the church can can pass it off as being sinful, then we can believe that we have no responsibility to help other than praying for them. So how should we respond? What should we do? How should we react? Well, how we should see and respond to our sisters and brothers who live with mental illness can be understood best, I believe, by Jesus' response to the disciples in this text. Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So Jesus has him wash in the pool of Siloam, and then the man sees. You see, Jesus saw the worth 
in this man and declared that God would receive glory because of him. You see, folks, it's past time to stop judging everyone on everything all of the time. Besides, those judgments are made in ignorance anyway. We need to see the work in all of God's children, in each other. We need to know that God's going to get glory out of others' contributions as well as our own. You see, we need to be more like Jesus in how we treat each other, how we see each other. It may mean that we have to be more patient with some than others. It may mean that we have to wait a little bit longer. It, it may mean that we have to work with and around some behavioral issues. But here's the truth of the matter. God is wanting to get glory out of all of us. God wants God's magnificent works to be displayed in all of our lives. May, May is set aside as a month with many different things, but one of which is mental health. And to my friends living with mental illness, I want you to know that Jesus is a healer. Jesus has always been and will always be. Jesus is a healer. And sometimes Jesus chooses to heal us through counseling and through medical science. But Jesus is a healer. And I want you to understand that Jesus knows how to share with folks with mental health issues. Oh yeah, the Bible, yeah, the Bible has plenty of examples of this. You see, Jesus had 12 named disciples. And I believe that there were some mental health issues with this group. James and John, yeah, I believe they struggled with emotional regulation. Peter showed signs of some kind of attention deficit disorder and labeled stigmas. And all of them had behavioral issues. And this is the group that Jesus chose to change the world. Well, as our dear friend, the Reverend Dr. Charles McCaskey, closed out his sermons for over 40 years, and you think about that all week long. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. Friends, if you are with us this morning and Jesus the Christ is not in control of your life, Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, we encourage you today to take this invitation to make the best decision that you can possibly make in your life and to begin to live your life to the glory of God. Perhaps there's someone who's with us this morning, who would like to be a member of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. If this is the case, we'd be more than happy to have you as a member here. And yes, we can even accept your membership under these conditions during these times. Or perhaps special prayer is what you need. That's fine as well. I encourage you, if any of these three touch you, I encourage you to contact me this week. Again, you've got my email address right here on this website. Contact me, and let's set up a time to talk. But we want to get things right between you and the Lord. Amen.
This is my prayer in the desert when all that's within me feels dry. This is my prayer in hunger and need. My God is the God who provides. This is my prayer in the fire, in weakness or trial or pain. This is a faith proved of more worth than gold. So refine me, Lord, through the flame. I will bring praise. I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will declare God is my victory and he is near. This is my prayer in the battle, and triumph is still on its way. I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ, firm on his promise I'll stand. I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will declare, God is my victory, and he is here. All of my life, I have received, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. All of life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. I will bring praise. I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will declare, God is my victory, and he is near. This is my prayer in the harvest when favor and providence flow. I know I'm filled to be emptied again. The seed I've received, I will sow. Amen. My friends, as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, there are some pieces I need to share with you on today. Of course, we want to continue to pray for those who are directly affected by COVID-19, those with the virus, those who have lost loved ones because of the virus, those taking care of people with the virus, and of course, our first responders, of which we have some who are members of this congregation. We want to continue to lift them up in prayer. Of course, we want to pray for those who are living with mental illness right now. And then, my friends, I need to share with you that on yesterday evening, our dear friend, counselor, mentor, leader, servant, 
Jan Gifford joined the church triumphant. And I've been given permission to share this at this time. And I'm asking, of course, that you would thank God for Jan and keep the Gifford family in your prayers. Missy, Mel, Blake, their families. Keep them in your prayers on today. Services, of course, are pending, but once we know what the family wants, we will let you all know as to how we will share in celebrating Jan's life. At the conclusion of this prayer, my friends, I will be saying the Lord's Prayer. And of course, wherever you are, I would invite you to join me in saying it. Now, let's talk to the Lord. Again, Creator God, we thank you for loving us unconditionally. For touching us, enabling us to serve you as best as we can. And Lord, today we pray, especially for those who doubt your existence, who openly declare that you're not real. We pray that they will come to know what we know, to love you and to trust you as we do. Lord, we ask your blessings today upon your children struggling with COVID-19 directly. We all are struggling with it on some level right now, dear Lord. We pray for healing for those who have this virus and those who have other illnesses. We pray for their caretakers, dear Lord. We pray for all of our first responders that you would keep them safe, keep them healthy, keep them strong. We pray for your children who are living in assisted living places. for their own safety are not allowed to leave their apartment complexes or their apartments in general. That you would keep them inspired. Of course, Lord, we pray for those who are living with mental illness. Those who are caring for those with mental illness. May you be the one that we can lean on at all times. We can depend on. As you help us navigate these waters. As you receive glory out of each of us. By your hand. And Lord, we're grateful today. For Jan, a bright shining star in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for her. And we find comfort and peace. in believing and knowing that she is where Ralph is. That they are in your presence eternally. So we ask right now that you would continue to comfort Missy and Mike and Blake and Diana, Mel, their children, Jan's grandchildren. 
We ask, Lord, that you would comfort us. The Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church as yet again we must go on. We must go on without someone we love. Someone we hold dear. But Lord, we know that we can go on. For as Jan is with you, we know that you're still with us. And we trust you with all things. Now please, hear the words that you taught us to pray as we say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. If you knew her, if you really got a chance to know, know her, if you knew Jan Gifford, you also know that the Lord loves you. But why else would God bless us? It's such an exquisite, magnificent person. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today.